Greetings, family, and welcome to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray, family, that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life very much on your own terms, in your own narrative family, and that you're building up this, your spirit man, that you're building, you're strengthening up your mental man. And the only way to really build our spirit man is in nature. Uh, nature is the greatest protection the greatest teacher and really is just critical right now family so get out of the cities as much as you can if it's possible because um, you know I started telling guys to move to the motherland they're like oh uh, there are still many roadblocks that they're trying to create to the motherland maybe I'll do that for like a rumble show or maybe I'll have to because there's so much truth that's been hidden family and it's like if you don't have a strong enough mind you may think now it's okay to do certain things like the jibby jab and all these things were well, exaggerated uh, but you still need to think like the pressure we felt two years ago when we decided to go against the babylon system and stand for our you know for for the pure blood let me put it like that is the same energy you have to have now in building your future don't let babylon lull you into sleep because babylon Babylon is moving full steam ahead with their agenda. But before I even get into that, family, um, I'm calling upon you guys to support Ron Dalton, especially if you're in South Africa. There's been so much back and forth with screening uh, Hebrew to Negroes in Africa and in particular in South Africa. The first screening that we had talked about so much on this show was cancelled last minute at Monte Cassino. And then and um, Soweto Theatre came through and said they would host the premiere, not knowing that they would also get a phone call. And there's just been so much pressure and negative tug of war that Ron has been facing. All of a sudden, people, the softies like Umar Johnson are, are doing a tour in South Africa when there's 50 other countries in the continent. They use so many tactics, family. And this is definitely something I'm going to do a whole show on. We just want to make sure that it gets screened before I share too many details, but I will definitely do that and some footage as well. But you know, we're used so much against each other as well. Why? Because now Umar could have been like, yo, Ron's in, Ron's in town as well. We're all just trying to break the, you know, the, the narrative, the slave mentality. But instead he's now trying, like they've almost brought them to clash. We have to see family that even when we don't agree we have to be together. That's the only way Babylon has been able to defeat us or to keep us, like to keep winning. You know, for them, it's like games. It's like football. They're always the winners because they're always together. It's so easy for them to divide and conquer. And I know this is one of the things we were groomed on before we were let into the cow pens, you know, where we thought we were free because at now I'm, I'm a Kenyan, I'm a Ugandan, but really we were just in a controlled environment. And that's what the countries are. Hey, those are stories for the days, you know. I'm just so like, I just, I'm so passionate about telling our people to get their story, to figure out a different story from what and who Babylon has told you. Because Babylon wants this confusion. They get, when you don't know yourself, family, that's when they get you. That's when they can feed you any story about your people. You know, I remember like how we were taken to British system schools. And it's interesting because some of us were from single mothers. We wonder how they were able to afford to take us to some of these schools. But we were so deeply brainwashed about the inferiority of our ancestors. Our ancestors were demonized. And we were the ones who were being groomed to be the leaders of the neo-colonial states of Kenya and Uganda. We're the ones who received a privileged education. We got to be among the Mzungu. Some of us even got that Oreo mentality where like there's really a lot of elites family who have more Mzungu friends than Kenyan friends. They even look down on their own people. And I know it's not just about Kenya, it's across Africa. And I mean, before I used to look at them with disgust, but now I look at them with sadness because so many of them fall, fell for the okie doke of Babylon. 
so many of them took the jibby jab and forced their staff, the poorer people, to take it. Because they had no clue. Like, Babylon has got them good. And so now, for me, I don't admire anyone who's, who is African and has money. That's not what I admire. But if you're African and you're awake and you're independent, ooh, that's, those are the kind of friends I'm looking for. Those are the kind of networks I'm looking to build. Because so many family on the motherland are deep asleep. And, you know, the reason I share this is because we almost take it for granted, the importance of our narrative. And if we don't know, our people perish for lack of knowledge. Because if you don't have any narrative family, you by default fall into the Babylonian narrative. And it's crazy because, you know, the Babylon has been telling us they're not hiding. For decades, they've been telling us what they, they were creating a new world order. George Bush Sr. even said it in the United Nations, just spelling it there. George Bush Jr. talked about it. Obama talked about it. I think Biden has talked about it. Like, they're not hiding that they're here to create the new world order. And they have used the mind and to create it. They've been genius enough to manipulate the global narrative, to create one global consciousness that they control, that overrides all global consciousnesses. And they tried to implement it one step further. Remember when they were talking about the WHO wanted to implement where if a COVID should ever happen in the future, they can override national laws and make sure like the entire world gets jibby jabbed and stuff. And it was actually the Africa bloc that blocked that from coming to pass. But that's where they've taken the consciousness. They created these individual countries and these individual governments, especially on the motherland, so that they could eventually collapse them and then create an Africa, create a Europe, like Hunger Games situation, create a North America, you know, the African Union, the European Union, the North American Union, the Latin American Union, the Asia Union. All of them are copy paste the same thing. But what they didn't count on is so many chosen ones, so many star seeds, so many cosmic souls risking it all to be born in the pit of hell. They didn't count on that. And so the minds of the awakened ones have delayed the agenda of Babylon and dismantled it and made it weak, but they'll never let you know that. The mind and the free will, those who are like, no, this is not our story. They're the ones who are keeping this from becoming a total prison planet. And they're the ones who have delayed the takeover until the ancient ones could pass through the portals to get here. They're the ones who came and did the heavy lifting to at least lift Mama Earth to a vibration where we could be recognized and a spiritual rescue could be undertaken because we were in darkness. We could not, they could not even find us. That whole Kali Yuga, we are, were in a, in a whole other dimension family. And the reason I say that is because they know Babylon, the Illuminati, the secret societies that run the world, they know they're running out of time. And so they're rushing to get as many souls as they can. And now it's every soul for himself or every soul for herself. You have to. For us, we were just supposed to put sparks and keys in you. And I'm so grateful, family. I feel so honored when you email me and you leave it in the comments. All the love. I love you guys, too. Um, but when you tell me how, you know, you've been able to come out of your mental prison, that is just so rewarding to me because we've taken crazy risks, family. And for you guys who say you can't see me properly, sometimes it's by design because we are still a major target for Babylon. We have to maintain, we have to be in 5D 24-7. We can never come down to 3D because then we'll be on the level of the people that we're liberating you from. And they're not happy with the people who are sharing the truth. So everything, I think um, if you've managed, you should watch the show I did where I talked about how poverty was engineered 
So all these countries, Kenya, Uganda, like I think Tanzania has like 146 nations. Remember, nations, they had their own social system, spiritual system, governmental system, healing system. They had all the seven pillars that Babylon has used. Babylon copied our seven pillars. Well, I haven't talked about the seven pillars in a while. So they created Kenya so that I would no longer see myself as Agekoyo. And then they put all the enemies of the, 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 the ones who got along and the ones who didn't got along, the ones with totally different nations, totally different cultures. So then the Agekoyo, the Kalenjin, the Luo, all these nations have, which have, historically were warring have not been able to found a level ground because we've all been forced We've all been cloned into the Babylon system. It's like, I don't care who you were. I don't care who your God was. I don't care who your ancestors were. But now we're in this British system or we're in this French system. So already we don't know ourselves. We've been disconnected from our ancestors, told our ancestors are demons. We've been disconnected. Our memory has been erased. They killed our storytellers, they killed our seers, they killed our healers, everybody. I mean, seriously. For some, generations were taken out. Like countries like Uganda, an entire generation of like 50, 60 year olds is gone. Same with Rwanda. And the trauma of what happens remains, family. And so the next step, when you start seeing the, Af the only reason the African Union hasn't come together like the European Union, which still has its issues and other unions, is because all these selfish dictators don't want to give up their power. They're puppets, but they also are lords in their own kingdom and they don't want to give that up. So that delays the African Union. But they'll play okey-doke with the West. They'll take their money and say, oh, let's go and help Sudan. It's all the agenda of Babylon. And they're the ones who most of the time start the wars. Because I think there's unrest in like Sudan and they're saying some of the ancient artifacts would be, could, you know, could be destroyed. You see how they want to destroy all the artifacts? They also want to destroy all the instruments of power family. Because they think we can't create them again or they think we need them to activate something. No, the ancient ones are back. We're here. The information is not outside of ourselves. It's inside. Just like my ancient goddess mother, Sekhmet, created instruments of war. I now have the memory of that in my bloodline to create the same instruments of war. So we don't need all they've taken away from us. But what we need is just the silence and the calmness and the peace of mind to be able to hear ourselves think long enough for us to be able to reassemble our own story. And this was not even what I was planning to talk about during this show. I had actually wanted to talk about how Elon Musk is now launching his Neuralink, but I'll go ahead and I'll do that because I have a whole other narrative. But this has been sitting so heavy on my heart, family because they've tried to disassociate ourselves. And as long as you have no story, then you have no future. And now they even create the Mandela effect where it's almost like they're taunting us and they'll wobble reality. It's messed up. And what is happening now, family, is that they are trying to collapse truth. They've always been after truth. Because they know even if they tell you a lie and you believe it, you will create that lie for them. There are many lies that they have passed as truths that have bound us. Because right now, many are bound by their bodies. Because of the, the religion and what the religion has told them. What they've been taught about gravity and all this stuff the Big Bang Theory and all this nonsense family that has just played with them with their storyline. And now they're collapsing all those stories, which is leaving people like foundationless. So now AI can come 
and create a whole new world order because nobody knows who they are. And you know, there was actually a crazy story. You know, there was that time when all these children were being found and stuff. There was a story that was going around that, um, you know, there's all these stories that they try and say about the world. And they said like, you know, they were saving certain children or uh, like millions of children had been taken and were being kept somewhere because when they erase the whole world, they would now introduce this, these new children into reality and create like a whole new reality and world where they would never know ourselves. And part of it was a jibby jab, which is supposed to cap you. And I told friends who have gotten it and they've gotten so emotional, but it, you'll only be able to see from a certain, you, they cap you family. You can't go higher than 3D. You may sometimes tap into 5D, but you are now at war with your own body. Your body is also, you are fighting for the seat of your body. You know, in the ancient of days, the wandering spirits, you had to be strong in your body because a wandering spirit could just come and dislodge you. That's what they say about alcohol. Like you'll take enough alcohol and you'll lose yourself. Well, basically what that means is now the spirit overrides and is now controlling your body. That is what AI wants to do and is, has done in many people. Many are programmed and ready for Elon Musk Neuralink. And I share all this to say, family, that these are perilous times. We are in the best of times and we are in the worst of times. I'm reporting from 5D, life is beautiful. But there will come a time when 5D will no longer be able to communicate with 3D and we will be forced to transition to something else. And so while we are here, family, we urge you to listen to the awakened voices that have been there. The John Henry Clarks, Miles Monroe is a good one, by the way. Maybe I'll do a whole show on this. And guys always, Nelly Fuller, I mean, there's so many. Get all that knowledge in your mind because that will shift things. You know, someone was saying that books are portals. And I believe certain conversations we have become portals as well. But books are portals that can transfer us, transport us into another world, which is why Babylon has done everything to rewrite our books so that they could close out those portals. So when I talk about make sure you have your books, the most critical ones, I will definitely do a show. If anyone would like to sponsor a show on the most critical books of this time, email me, drmumbi at drmumbishow.com because it is kind of like um, a big undertaking. Get your story in order, family. And then surround yourself with people who at least are not in the Babylon story. And if you're lucky enough, who share a similar story to you. So if you're in South Africa, June 11th family, let's meet. We'll, some of us will be there spiritually. And let's help Ron to push through this. You know, if you can fast, if you can pray, just so this is told because he's like breaking these gates that have kept all narratives except for the Babylon narrative away from our people. And it's amazing because even the Zulu nation has heard of this. They're behind him now. So there's less bullying going on, if I can put it like that. A lot is going on, but Soweto Theater, June 11th, doors open at 11, the screening starts at 1, and afterwards, Ron will have a few words to share. There's people who actually are flying in. They were flying in for the first screening, but when it wasn't, they just rebooked their tickets. There's going to be a lot of interesting people talking, including DJ Spoo and many others, family who I believe are on that 5D vibe. If you need any more details, check out Hebrew to Negroes dot, I think the link is here, it's either dot net or dot TV. And you can also get the tickets there. I'll share the ticket where you can get the tickets as well on my Twitter and down below. You know, for too long, we've been treated like children. 
but now it's us find time for us to come into our own and say that we can handle all truths. We don't need Babylon to play this paternalistic role with us anymore where they tell us, listen to this, don't listen to that. The, the, the season of mind control is over because we're higher than them. But those are stories for other days to Kopamoja.